So Canada did an interesting study. They call it the New Leaf Project. And the idea was, hey, what would happen if we give homeless people $7,500? What would happen if you give people without homes, people who are living in extreme poverty, more money? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? What's going to happen? Now, I mean, I'm willing to guess it'd be a good thing because poor people are lacking money. So if you give them money, it probably helps in a variety of different ways. So um, let me tell you, this is in Vox here. This is some of what they say. The study conducted by the Charity Foundations for Social Change in partnership with the University of Brit British Columbia was fairly simple. It identified 50 people in the Vancouver area who had become homeless in the past two years. In spring 2018, it gave them each one lump sum of $7,500 uh, in Canadian dollars, and it told them to do whatever they wanted with the cash. At first, I thought it was a little far-fetched. Too good to be true, Ray said. I went with one of the program representatives to a bank, and we opened up a bank account for me. Even after the money was there, it took me a week for it to sink in. Over the next year, the study followed up with the recipients periodically, asking how they were spending the money and what was happening in their lives. Because they were participating in a randomized, controlled trial, their outcomes were com were compared to those of a control group, 65 homeless people who didn't receive any cash. Both cash recipients and people in the control group got access to workshops and coaching focused on developing life skills and plans. The results? The people who received cash transfers moved into stable housing faster and saved enough money to maintain financial security over the, over the year of follow-up. They decreased spending on drugs, tobacco, and alcohol by 39% on average and increased spending on food, clothes, and rent, according to self-reports. That's amazing. Now, we have more information on it. Giving out the cash transfers in the Vancouver area uh, actually saved broader society money. Enabling 50 people to move into housing faster saved the shelter system $8,100 per person over the year for total savings of $405,000. That's more than the value of the cash transfers, which means the transfers pay for themselves. This is like another study we discussed on the show. Um, it saves taxpayers money if you just put a roof over homeless people's heads. If you give them one of those little, you know, those like micro houses, that actually saves money in the long run to the taxpayer. Even if the taxpayer pays for that house up front. Because, you know, they end up the homeless folks end up using a lot more government resources when they're not housed. And so we're learning more here. Hey, if you give homeless people some money, if you give them a roof over their head, it turns out the results are swell. The results are fantastic. You reduce the homeless population and you give people some financial security and they use that as a springboard for the rest of their lives. I mean, listen, with some people who are homeless, they're deeper issues at play, whether it's addiction issues, whether it's um, mental health issues, and those people need specialized help. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But by and large, when you give these people money, the studies are clear. Now we know 39% cut in spending to tobacco, drugs, alcohol, and things of that nature. And a lot of this money goes towards regular schmegular bills that anybody else would be dealing with. So... I think that's what's so frustrating about following politics as closely as I do, is that oftentimes the answers really are incredibly simple, but we don't do them. And we also have a backlash when you do the right thing. A lot of people be like, I don't want that to happen, even though it's going to save me money in the long run. I don't like it. And so round and round we go with all these curable societal ills. They're curable. They're fixable. Or we can at the very least improve them drastically. And we don't do it. And part of the reason why in the U.S. is that, you know, there is no lobby for the homeless that's as powerful as, say, Wall Street or the military industrial complex or Amazon or any of the special interest groups. And that's why politicians are representing those interests and not the interests of homeless folks. So that's it. There's the result of the study. Giving poor people, giving homeless people $7,500 has some positive effects.